and I'm in the second position, but let's see, trying to get on the first. Well, in this video, we are going to talk about quantization. Now, we all know that the models are huge and we want to reduce the bits that is being used for representation of the different weights and biases and activation functions. So we have a model, let's say 16 bit model. We quantize the parameters to 16 from 16 bit to let's say 8 bit or 4 bit or even 1 bit quantization. But what do we sacrifice when we quantize? We sacrifice accuracy. We sacrifice some knowledge that goes out because of the quantization that we did. Now, what if there is a way to basically store those knowledge and make less damage while preserving most of the knowledge and the capabilities of the large language model? Now, this is what Unsloth is talking about. So the TLDR is that you cannot quantize it. You know, if you have a 16-bit model, for example, here, you cannot or you should not uh, use quantization and convert it into a 4-bit of in all the layers. We need to segment those layers. We need to identify those layers which are very much vulnerable to the quantization process. So we, we find out the layers where the quantization is most affected. We ignore those layers and do the quantization for the rest of the layers. So that is a TLDR. But going in deep, can we really shrink a 20 GB language model to a 5 GB model without sacrificing accuracy? Well, until now, uh, there have been many successful 4-bit quantizations, for example, GGUF format. We have uh, AWQ format and then you have uh, GPTQ formats. But those formats, even though we are able to reduce the size, but much of the accuracy and the knowledge of the large language models goes out along with this. So Unslot is excited to bring the dynamic 4-bit quantization, which involves dynamically opting not to quantize certain parameters and this builds up on top of bits and bytes 4-bit. Now this approach delivers significant accuracy gains while only using less than 10% more VRAM than bits and bytes 4-bit. So bits and bytes 4-bit uses let's say 20 GB of VRAM then it uses less than 10% more, which is like 22 GB. So within 22 GB, you are getting a better response. Now, let's go through one of these examples. So for example, we have Quan, Quan2, a vision language model, which is a 2 billion instruct model. And here, this is a 16-bit model. Now, when we give it the input of this image, it gives out this response. The image shows a train traveling on tracks which is a pretty good result. The size of this model is 4.11 GB. Now, if we default all the 4-bit layers, you know, you know, all the layers into 4-bit, then we get this as output, which is the image depicts a vibrant and colorful scene of a coastal area, which is absolutely wrong. But using the unsloth quantization, we can see that this image, the output from the large language model is pretty good it is preserved so it may shows a train traveling on tracks now you can see the size of the Unsloth uh, quantization model we can see that the size is about uh, within 33 uh, percent more than the all layers 4-bit quantization but still looking at the performance you know it's nothing compared to 4.11 gb it's less than half of the size and still we get a better representation or better answer so this is the whole thing uh, that is about and you can see that if we plot so let's take a model for example quen2 vision language 2 billion instruct quantization errors so we take this model and do the quantization of all the layers and then we see that we have significant a mean square square root of mean square errors so we have significant errors when compared to the original model when we have in this example when the layers are less on all the first layers so you can see that this has this model has about 120 layers and you can see that on the x-axis we have plotted those layers 
So in the first few layers, if you do quantization, you're going to get difference between the actual and the uh, four bit quantized model. So what it means that we should not quantize these models because maybe something important is going on uh, during the first part of the layers and therefore it's better we don't quantize this because as it is evident from the graph of the errors that you see here so this is regarding the activation error now on the other hand the weights error the weights or, or the learned parameters which we have for a model for that we have seen we now see that is somewhere near about 120 layers 120th layer we see that there is a huge spike if we quantize those model so we need to not quantize this part of the layer so we would not quantize for example 110 to 130 to make a safeguard so that by accidentally we don't quantize this 120 as well so this is the use of this activation graph and the weight graph it shows the error and where you have larger error so those layers you have to omit when you quantize this model so doing this approach you know looking at llama 3.2 we see that we have the 16-bit model which is about 20 gb and um, we see that the the unslot quant is able to reduce the image uh, reduce the size of the model to 7 gb and by default when we say 4 bit in all layers it reduces to 6.54 gb but again the brain is lost the the entire inference is lost and there is no mention of purpose of the image while in the 16 bit we see that there is a purpose of the image uh, given here as well the unslot font also gives us the purpose which means so many of the things have been preserved because we uh, did look at the graphs of the errors and we restricted ourselves from quantizing those errors so for example here we can we should not quantize uh, layers let's say 75 to 85 and looking at the weight quantization we should not quantize any layer which is greater than let's say 290 so all these layers are vulnerable to quantization so we need to prevent ourselves from quantizing those we want quantization because the sizes of the models are huge but again we have to look at what are we sacrificing so we can see that in the pixel model uh, on the right hand side we can see that anything greater than let's say 190 or 180 we should not quantize we can do quantization for the lower part of the layers but again looking at the quantization of activation function we can see that the lower layers are prone to quantization so here we see that we cannot do quantization here it's very difficult to get a good answer with the quantization because different parts of the layers uh, <coughs> different layers shows uh, different errors when looking at quantization of the activation and the weights so let's look at uh, llama 3.2 90 billion vision instruct it's pretty clear that we have somewhere close to 70 and somewhere close to 200 and uh, you know 250 we should not attempt to quantize those layers the rest of the things we can obviously do now you can look at different images uh, of the errors now you i think you're pretty confident to declare and see which layers should you quantize you know it resolves the problem of you know our understanding that we were of the view that if we have a larger model and we just quantize it then we should get almost a good response as the original image but we have a reduction in memory but it always happens that there is so much reduction in the capabilities of the model when we do the quantization but with this new approach you will be able to selectively quantize a few layers or not quantize a few layers so as to get a better model so this is what it's all about and you can see that we have so many different examples of the models here we have so many different uh, quantization methods or the 
in a Google Collab notebooks that you can use to quantize your own models. And I have uh, published uh, quite a few videos on Unsloth. Uh, you can see that how to tune your models or tuning your own models, creating your own data set and doing everything on Unsloth because Unsloth is great. Uh, it's for fine tuning. And the one of the things that I'm happy to say is, uh, let me show you, is that you can see this AI Mathematical Olympiad, which is a progress price two is going on. And you can see that uh, these are the cash prizes that we have. And you can see on the leaderboard that your friend is in the second position. Now, how I did this, it's because of quantization. I tuned the model and, and it's going great. Of course, there are four months still left. Uh, let's see uh, how we do this. But uh, as of the last, I think uh, about seven, eight days, uh, this has been in the progress. And I'm in the second position, but let's see, trying to get on the first. But this is uh, what I have uh, as an update. And uh, I really felt that this is something you should know because dynamic quantization is it's pretty great we have awq this is pretty great as well uh, bits and bytes you know gptq we have another format as gguf and those are pretty good models that we have used but taking a break or taking something different from olama uh, but this is something which i would like to talk about so uh, this is your host prompt engineer and i'll be back with more videos in the future but till then uh, keep growing keep smiling and i will see you next time check out these other videos on my channel join my patreon like and share this video subscribe to my channel and i will see you again next time bye bye